Shalom people, this is Brother Lyles coming at you with another video. And I was um, woken up this morning uh, with uh, this thought on my mind that um, this needed to be said about the uh, upcoming memorial for Kobe Bryant on the 24th of this month of February and I'm getting the impression that uh, this memorial celebration is not something that I believe that if you are a believer in Yeshua and uh, understand what it means to be a fanatic or a follower of um, of men or women <laughs> that we uh, need to be participating in because I'm <clears throat> I'm seeing this thing with Kobe Bryant rise to a, a new level so that if I think if you had a battlefield right now within the, the black community here at least here in America that there will be folk killing each other over this individual well, although I don't have any thing to say negatively about uh, his life uh, I, I don't I didn't know him uh, I wasn't a follower or whatever of his career um, I don't get uh, bogged down in the accusations that were leveled against him, which I, you know, think were definitely uh, unwarranted. But there still is, on the other hand, that people, I believe, are raising uh, his life and his death to a uh, level of almost uh, worship. And not only him, people that are alive, we in the black community, which is why Yah uh, sent us into uh, exile in the first place. We have a propensity to worship people, places, and things, even though we don't call it worship. But I just had a few scriptures that were, I believe were laid on my heart that I need to speak this morning and be obedient to what I believe is what needs to be said and the scripture that came to mind was coming out of Matthew the 8th chapter verses 21 and 22 and it said and another of his disciples said unto him, Master, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And Yeshua said unto him, Follow me and let the dead bury their dead. Now I want to read out of two books um, that I purchased uh, last year to find out a, a little bit more about the customs of, the, of our people back during those times which sometimes can be clouded in mystery. Um, one of them I'm going to be reading from is this one right here. Uh, Idioms in the Bible explained a key to the original Gospels by George M. Uh, Lamsa. <clears throat> and this is another one, uh, Light Through an Eastern Window, K.C. Pilia, right here. And I'm going to be reading about what uh, they want us to know about this uh, passage that uh, is spoken here in Matthew the 8th. To help give you a better understanding of uh, why I'm uh, coming, where I'm coming from. Okay, this is uh, page 99. And this is explaining that the dead bury the dead. Well, actually, we're going to go to page 100. This gives an explanation. 
He said the Aramaic word for dead is meta. And this is, you know, to me was a sign that I needed to speak this. Um, one of Kobe's teammates he had was a guy named Ron Artest. But later Ron Artest changed his world to meta world peace. I wonder did he know that the word meta actually stood for dead. But we'll keep going. He said the word for a town is Mata. There is a slight difference in pronunciation. In many of the mutilated manuscripts, the small Aramaic uh, character which determines the difference between the meaning of these two words is likely to be destroyed, especially in caves of carelessness in writing and because of the glassy uh, manuscript ink used. Yeshua knew what this meant. Let me bury my father, if translated into English would mean my father is an old man over 70 years of age. I have to support him until he dies. In the East, when a man reaches this age, he is, a, he is considered dead. He has finished his work and has no more interest in life. He can no longer earn and produce. He is a burden on the family. He entrusts everything to his elder, oldest son, his firstborn, the son who is to continue his prosperity. He has labored and toiled with the sweat of his brow and raised his children. Now he expects them to take care of him. One often hears each of them say, my father is near the grave. My father's at the side of the grave. This, if literally translated into English, would mean my father is dead and put in the coffin, and the coffin is waiting beside the grave to be lowered. But the real meaning is my father may die any day. My father is very old. I expect him to pass away any time. If this man's father had been dead, Yeshua would have been preaching that day. Instead, he Instead, would not have been preaching that day. Instead, he would be one of the mourners until the dead man was buried. It seems more likely the early copyists and translators confused the word meta, town, for the word meta, dead. And what Yeshua meant was let the town bury the dead. This seems more reasonable because each town buried their own dead. And, um, Let's go to what it says here in this uh, book right here. Okay. This is said um, burial, death and burials. It said mourners is going about the streets and is indeed an Hold on. Yeah. Is it? <coughs> is indeed an apt description since the whole town turns out whenever a funeral is being held. Each and each thing they do a service to Yah in participating. Even a prince will, will in, attend the funeral of a beggar if the town, if his town, of his town for this reason. Yeshua said, follow me. And the young man replied, Lord, our master, suffer me first to go and bury my dead. Matthew 8 and 21. This is an old saying, which means my father is old and I would not. And I do not know when he will die. Let me see him buried before I come. Yeshua replied, let the dead bury their dead. Matthew 8 and 22. This is a misinterpretation of an Eastern idiom which should read, let the town bury their dead. A very understandable saying when one realizes that the whole town does take part in funerals. Okay. So you see here, which I totally agree, it probably, you know, was a mistranslation. Um, we we got to understand that's why uh, we were given that prohibition in uh, revelations about people to add to and taking away sometimes it would be by mistake but in this instance how does this relate to the memorial 
we know that um, Kobe is having a small private funeral where his body will be um, laid to rest uh, if people are able which I doubt it, very doubt is going, that's going to be open to the public. I, well, I wouldn't have anything. The problem I'm having with this memorial is it's going to be almost like the um, thing dealing with uh, uh, the death of Michael Jackson. And um, it's going to, to me, I, I, I'm just getting the impression that Yah is not pleased with our people, not because of the memorial in itself, but how they are viewing it. They're viewing it as they can't believe that their a Jimmy God has passed. And this is not good. This is a problem in our communities uh, that um, Yah is... Um, trying to get us to uh, deal with and get away from living our, our lives vicariously through these stars. There's a reason why they are called stars. Uh, what did they, the Revelation say? He said the, the stars were cast from heaven. This is why in the Hollywood rituals, these people are given stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, or they're considered to be sports stars. They are supposed to be the messengers, uh, or rather, they are the embodiment of the stars or the angels that were kicked out of heaven, but now take up their residence in men to be illuminated among men as being some kind of divine being and um, that, that I believe that's what you, you're going to see in the memorial amongst our people the elevation uh, of uh, Kobe to some kind of immortal status among some of us and Yah said he's not pleased not only with this in instance but with any instance where we are promoting people um, he said he's coming back for a uh, assembly without spot or wrinkle and we can't put any and I know people say well can we not watch basketball games I'm not saying that watch basketball game but our people uh, have a propensity to put people places and things in a, a divine state even uh, some of their loved ones and <clears throat> this is why we Yah in particular gave us Exodus uh, 20 1 through 5 because of that and let's go to that Exodus 20 1 through 5 he said <clears throat> and Yah spoke all these words saying I am the master thy Elohim which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage thou shalt have no other Elohims before me thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under uh, the earth thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I the master thy uh, Elohim am a jealous Elohim visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon their children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me he said clearly here in verse 4 he said uh, make any graven image of anything that is in uh, uh, in heaven above or is in the earth beneath and when uh, we, we, we have these posters that we place up on our walls and our children go to sleep under these people who make been made stars. Do you not understand that this is a type of form of worship uh, that uh, people elevate to a level of, they say, uh, as he said, bowing themselves to 
uh, these uh, sports stars, these actors and actresses, and therefore when they pass as suddenly as he he does, we think it's at uh, out of ordinary because we believe that these people have control over their life and that Yah doesn't have anything to do with uh, even giving them the breath in their body because of the amount of money and prestige that they have that a lot of us wish we had. I used to be a very uh, avid follower of basketball as a young man uh, growing up. I can remember sometimes I would, uh, I love basketball so much, I can remember uh, sometimes in the summer months, when my mom would let us stay up late, late into the night, I'm talking about one and two, three o'clock in the morning, sometimes in the summertime when we was out of school, I can remember one time going, because we had a basketball court down the street from my house, it, it was it was less than about 500 feet from my house. I remember going out in my pajamas one night and, and getting out there on the basketball court playing basketball. I grew up reading uh, Street and Smith magazines. I knew about stats. I knew about high school. I knew about college. I knew about pro. I could tell you percentages. All of that. I wasn't into betting. I just like loved the game for the game. And I knew about McDonald's. All Americans. I knew about the camps. I knew all of this stuff. Well, this is before the internet, so I used to have a, a, a gigantic collection of Sports Illustrated that I paid for myself when I was growing up. All of this, uh, all of them went away when I went into the military. But I knew about this stuff. But um, when I got, when I was born again in Germany in 1987. Uh, and because of the the way back then, you know, it, you could kind of get any American programs except through AFFN, American uh, Armed Forces, something. I think it was AFFN, some Armed Forces Network. Yeah, AFN, I think it was. You you would get the games usually a few hours late or or whatever. I think y'all allowed that to happen because. It kept me away from probably, you know, watching basketball games all the time because I had a young family and also I was young and in, and in, and in, in, in yeah, um, but I didn't have time for that anymore. And by the time I got to the states, um, I kind of that's the that the core two two following players uh, kind of had been diminished a little bit. Now when I got Back to the states, and I got stationed uh, in upstate New York. I did pick it back up a little bit and, and watch, you know, because Michael Jordan was on the rise. He had won his first championship yet when I got back to Germany in 1990. He la he he later did win his first championship while I was there in my duty station there in upstate New York. And I and I have to admit I did follow that, but I still was not following these games like and I, you know like uh, the fanatic that I had been and I think y'all had did that or I would have been <clears throat> one of these nail biting uh, paranoid uh, you know f f fanatics uh, that would have uh, been you know this consumed with that I, I don't uh, fault anybody for watching sports you know it's nothing wrong with that but I think uh, Yah uh, understands what we are doing when we go beyond uh, this um, phase of following people to deify them and that's in anything we this is why Yah gave us our people the fourth commandment because he knew we had a propensity to worship people, place, and things. And if you don't believe that, let's go to, you're going to go to 2 Kings to show you what I mean. 2 Kings uh, 18 and verse 1. Okay, and this is talking about King Hezekiah. 
Second Kings 18 and 1 said, Now I came to pass in the uh, third year of uh, Hosea, son of Eli, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abai, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the master, according to all that Dawid his father did. Now listen to this. He removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses or Moshe had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it. And he called it Nehusta. Nehusta. So what had happened was that brazen serpent, the bronze serpent that uh, 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 Moses had uh, made in the wilderness and lifted it up for the people to to to, to look at so that they can live out there. They got uh, bitten by the serpent. The people had began to worship this thing. The, the purpose of Moses making this was not so that they would uh, worship it. There wasn't. But somehow it got passed down as some kind of relic. And now our people, or at least the northern kingdom at that time, was worshiping it. And Hezekiah went into the northern kingdom and he grabbed the, the pole, not himself, but he had probably had somebody grab it and cut it into pieces so that the people would stop worshiping it. Because they, and this is one reason why Moses' body had to be buried by Archangel Michael, according to, let's go to Jude. Jude. Says this, the book of Jude says this. Okay, uh, Jude, uh, what verse is this? Okay, Jude, yeah, Jude 9. He said, yet, yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moshe, does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the master rebuked thee. And the reason that he was doing it was because if the people uh, would have had Moses' body, they would have never moved on. They would have worshipped Moses' body right then because... His affiliation with uh, bringing them out. This is why when Yeshua came, they had a problem because they were still worshiping Moses. And that's why when Yeshua went into the Mount of Transfiguration with the, the, the uh, disciples and, and Moses and Elijah appeared, uh, Peter wanted to build a, a tabernacle for Moses, for Elijah, and for Yeshua equating them on a divine level with Yeshua and you heard the voice from heaven said the cloud came which was the, the the representation of the Holy Spirit came and overshadowed them and the voice that spoke out of the the cloud said this is my son hear ye him and then said they uh, Moses and Elijah went away because Yah was trying to say the time for worshiping Moses and Elijah is over Listen to my son. He is divine, not these two. And so we have a propensity for people that rise in our community to de de deify them. And I believe that there are going to be some, not all, people that's going to look at that uh, broadcast on the 24th and they're going to deify Kobe, whether or not you know it in your heart. And Yah said, if you do that, he is not going to be pleased with us. Notice what he, he said. He said, I brought you out of Egypt. And he said, now don't come out of Egypt and keep worshiping. If we want Yah to deliver us, at least those of us who said we believe that we are the people and that Yah is going to deliver us out of this spiritual Egypt and deliver us out of this spiritual bondage. Us who are doing this. I'm not talking to anybody else. Uh, he said in, 
in Matthew 8. He said, let the town bury the dead. Let the them wherever they having that private funeral. Let them go do that. Us who are saying that we are believers in Yeshua and we believe in that he's going to pull us out. I don't, I, if you watch it casually, uh, I don't have any problem. But I'm saying if you set aside time, if you take a day off to go uh, watch this whole thing, which is going to probably last all day, I can imagine it will, just like with Michael Jackson. I'm saying to you that if you do that, I believe that y'all won't really be pleased in that sense because he said let he's going to have a private funeral. He is passed on. And, uh, it was some people that could go where they think he's at right now because you know they're going to have him with wings on the back, which is another sign of deification. This is not good. This is uh, 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 what, what I'm I'm trying to get a hold to you that uh, you're gonna see this. I'm I'm, I'm telling you you're gonna see it if you watch it. Uh, I'm 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 not saying that when it comes out on the news and they have little clips of it, but I'm saying if you go home and you spend, which I'm I'm believing it's gonna last some hours. I don't think we we need to get away from doing this kind of stuff. This is what I'm feeling in my heart. That us who saying we are woken, us who say that we're ready to get out of Babylon. This is the Babylonian type thing that we are doing. Babylon, uh, just like uh, Nebuchadnezzar when he when Daniel had the dream about him being the head of gold. What did uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar went and do? He went and made a statue made out of solid gold because he said, "Y'all will not forget me." Because remember, when he had the, the dream, the statue got destroyed and it had different uh, metals on it. But Nebuchadnezzar basically was defying Yah and saying, I'm going to make a statue out of solid gold and Yah is not going to destroy it. And what did Yah end up doing to Nebuchadnezzar? He ended up making him like a crazy man. But up until that point, Nebuchadnezzar thought he was a god. Then that people should worship him. I'm not saying that Kobe thought he was a god or he even wanted anybody, but I'm saying to you that have who made him like that, don't do that. If you if you if you look at it, uh, uh, and and you're looking at it just for the you know to see what's going on, whatever. But I'm saying to you that's gonna look at it like that and say, you know, um, you know, have that 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 elevation of him above what he is and and, and, and people are gonna say oh he's among the luminaries this is where you get this thing about the stars and y'all said don't do that say hey you know his death you know was a sad situation wish it hadn't happened or whatever but just like Yeshua told the man you know the town can bury your father if you're going to do my work, do my work and let the, the town bury your father if I have called you. And so he, um, the reason I'm saying this is <clears throat> we have a lot of self-proclaimed prophets that I believe y'all is probably telling them to say the same thing that I'm saying, you know, on my little platform, but they're not going to say it. You know why they're not going to say it? They're not going to say it for this reason. Let's go to um, John, the book of John, the 15th chapter and verse 18. This is this is Yeshua talking. This is John 15 and 18. He said, if the world hate you, ye you know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye are of the world, the world would love his own. Because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater <clears throat> than his master. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sins, they will keep yours. 
also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the world, the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. Uh, they hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify me of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. He said, because I'm going to say things that's going to uh, make the world upset, they're going to hate me. So after I'm off the scene, if you speak the words, continue to speak the words that I say to you, they're going to hate you because the world going to love its own. And I, I, whether you like it or not, uh, Kobe was a man of of the world. A lot of these sports stars and people is a lot of them. They say they're Christians. Try. So, so they say that they are Christians or whatever they want to say. They can't get away from it. I remember uh, a couple of years ago when they had the Grammys, which I don't watch none of that stuff anymore. And if you do that, uh, whatever for you. But I remember when they opened up the one of the Grammys a couple of years ago with that that lady. Um, no, not with the lady, uh, with the uh, the band that sang "I'm on the Highway to Hell." And so that's they opened up the show with that. And they made the people put devil horns on, right? And they have a couple people, they said, they said that they were Christians. They said they walked out, right? But a lot of them that say they were Christians stayed in there and put those horns on and start singing this. You see what I'm saying? He said the world loves its own. Now, what would happen if someone would have got up there and said, y'all, you know, uh, 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 go to hell. Why are you singing this song? They would have hated them. They wouldn't have said anything. To, they, they wouldn't say anything. Even the ones that walked out uh, didn't say anything. They just walked out and protest. But they didn't say anything. And so the Bible said the world loves its own. Kobe, uh, like I said, um, uh, was man of the world. And that's just the way it, it is. And so uh, he's saying, if you tell, if you were to tell the truth and say the things that I'm saying on a larger platform, and say, hey, there's some of you that are rising, raising Kobe to the level of of, of, of a uh, worship of a sports star, they know that people will hate them, and so they are not gonna say anything. They're just gonna keep silent, or they're gonna. Say, well, you know, this is just a celebration of life. Good, but they've had enough time. They built this thing and they're going to harness all this energy uh, for this. And I'm telling you, y'all not pleased, especially when there are uh, uh, things that we could be promoting. We could be promoting repentance amongst our people. We could be promoting uh, us separating ourselves from this Babylonian uh, way of living uh, on on our, on our platforms. And one of it is just breaking away from this hero worship. But because uh, uh, we, we love the world, a, a lot of us, but not myself included now, uh, uh, we won't do it, you know. And so... Then let's go to Mark, our book of Mark. And we're going to get ready to end because we don't want to beat a dead horse, but we're going to go to Mark 6 and 1. It said, and this is Mark 6 and 1. He said, He went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From thence has this man these things and what wisdom is 
this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the son of the brother of James and Joseph and Jonah and Simon and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Yeshua said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And he could not do mighty work, say that he laid his hand upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went about the villages teaching. He couldn't do much amongst his people, telling them to tell them the truth. They didn't want to hear the truth. So he couldn't do m much. Um, this message is not going to, you know, if I did have a, a big, big platform, this, 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 nobody would listen to me. In fact, they would be like, who, who is this guy? What is he talking about? Nobody is worshiping Kobe. Just like with the, the brazen uh, a, a serpent pole that they had taken to Moses and it was burning incense. I'm telling you, Yah is not pleased. He, he's sending calamity after calamity to our people uh, around the world. Uh, those is not getting in line because we are coming. We are coming to the time of the end, and the Bible says that the, the judgment must first begin with Israel, the twelve tribes, and he's and Yah is doing that. He's doing that so that now is the time for us to get ourselves together. And this is not something that we need to be pouring our energy, our psychic energy into. These people are psychic vampires and they're going to take this grief and this mourning and, and they're going to have some people that's going to be getting dreams and visitations and stuff because they have uh, opened up the door because of uh, worship of these stars and stuff. And it's not good. That's the reason they put uh, images of people on these big posters and, 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 and stuff and, and, and put them up in big cities so people can walk up and they can look up at them like they're looking up to a Elohim or God. And y'all said, you know, come out from Babylon, come out from amongst this stuff. We need to stop drawing ourselves away from this stuff and stop giving these people our energy. So I'm saying to you that on the 24th, you know, if y'all lay it on your heart, you, you know, I just don't believe that we need to be staying at home that day and watching hours and hours and hours of uh, people coming in this, as they say, preaching, you know, uh, him up into the uh, luminaries. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm just uh, I was just obedient to y'all. Well, he, he, uh, I believe that he laid on my heart to say to you about this. So if you want to give it a title, I say let, uh, um, uh, I would say let the dead bury the dead, but that's the, the commentary said it, it's probably a, a mistranslation. Um, so do we'll just say we, we'll say um, the, um, I don't really have a type for it. Just remember the uh, book of Exodus. Let's go back to that. Exodus 20. And I guess this would be a good title. It said uh, Exodus 20 and for he said, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Okay. No graven images. He said, In the earth beneath. Have no graven images in the earth beneath. And that's going to be our title. And not just Kobe, but uh, all these sports stars that we are elevating don't have no graven images in the earth beneath that's uh, our lesson for this morning you can like this video you can share it and uh, leave a comment uh, and subscribe to the channel be blessed